guys, I know we watch a lot of bad movies on this podcast, but let me ask you a question. If they made two sequels to this week's pick, Munchies, <laughs> how bad can it truly be? I mean, there must be some redeeming value to it, right? It must be funny or scary or maybe really well written or the effects are amazing. Well, we're here to tell you None it's of all of those things. It's a <laughs> fucking masterpiece beyond compare. Grab your shotgun, put on some Grateful Dead, and crack a wine spritzer because it's munchies on horror movie night. This movie, guys. Oh, so, what a so pile of shit. I want to start off. I think it's important that we give credit where credit is due. This was not picked by any of us. This and especially not supported by me. <laughs> yeah. It was picked by a listener. That listener's name is Chris. Chris has written to us many a times. But I, every once in a while, I think it's important that we read the email that we received. Because Chris actually, you know, like we said, if you give us more than just the name of the movie, but really give us the reason why you want us to discuss it, we'll read it. So his email says this. Hello again, sirs. Fan mail Chris here yet again. Just finished the Leprechaun 3 show, and oh, the Irish fun that it was. I have a request for a movie review for you guys. I call it the early 90s answer to daytime TV horror. I'm sure it'll be something unique to review, munchies. I'm sure the horror will be on you gentlemen with this film, and I'd love to hear you tear it limb from limb, especially the death by loudspeaker sequence. Um, so, so it's good to know that we are going into a movie that is not picked because it is someone's favorite film, but because it is a movie that they just want to hear us decimate. And Chris, you are in luck. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? I I did tear this movie limb from limb, but it regenerated, and then two more fucking movies came out after. <laughs> wow, that's really clever. And I know you just pulled that out of your ass. So congratulations. Um. So so the thing is, there are two sequels to this movie: Munchie and Munchie Strikes Again, because. That's like the cliched sequel to any kid's movie title. Um, Munchie became a kid's movie. It became a PG kid's movie with a single Munchie voiced by Dom DeLuise who granted wishes for a kid to help him fall in love with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt is, in fact, the female lead of um, the the Munchie's sequel, although at the time she just was Love Hewitt. She She didn't add the Jennifer to her name yet. Are you kidding? Wait, I'm dead serious. What? Yeah. What? what? She was Love Hewitt. Yep. According to Wikipedia. Yeah, it wasn't Jennifer Love or Jennifer Hewitt. It was no, Love Hewitt. Love Hewitt. Man, she must have had a weird childhood. <laughs> Speaking of which, I watched Can't Hardly Wait for about the millionth time last night. <laughs> so, Is that because Can't Hardly Wait is obviously Munchie 3, which is Munchie's 4? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to lie. The first note that I have here says I kind of love this movie. But that was written in the first 15 minutes of this movie. My opinion changed greatly shortly thereafter. Dude, um, no. Okay, I got to stop you. If you went 15 minutes into this movie thinking it was going to be fun, you probably weren't paying attention. <laughs> so, because this is based, I mean, I, I knew this would be a Gremlins ripoff, but damn it. Like, the only thing different is that the Munchie, which becomes Munchies, is Central American, it's like Mayan, and then Mogwai are Asian. Yeah, that, that that's like the only difference between the two movies. Like the original Munchie keeps on going amigo, which is supposed to be like the Magui. It's supposed to be the cute Magui, like I repeat whatever the fuck you say trope. But it's just so grating and annoying. Um, yeah, this this movie is just really really bad. It was like cringe worthy bad. I I couldn't even enjoy it like last week's pick. <laughs> yeah, so. So you know how, like, you know you're in for a treat when the main character of the movie is an aspiring stand-up comedian and he does not say a single funny thing in the entire goddamn movie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. There, it, there was that, like, there's that part where he's like filming himself in the beginning, and I, I guess he's supposed to be making jokes there. But at <laughs> what point did he ever say anything funny at all? Like, yeah, not. Never. I think his, and then I, his dad's in the right for not letting him pursue a failed yeah. career in comedy, like. For real, like why his dad is the voice of reason in in the beginning. There, he's like, and but that's what's so funny and ironic about that is his dad's like, yeah, you would suck as a comedian. But then he's like, I believe that Machu Picchu was uh, was a an alien control tower, 
I think it was what he was like. Yeah, yeah, oh, alien yeah. control tower. Yep, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> but you know what? You know when when he your was, dad is a was crazy right. conspiracy theorist, you got to start bringing out the funny, man. You can't <laughs> you can't take life too seriously. <laughs> Ex- except that the one kid thinks that he's funny and he's not, and the dad thinks that there might be alien life at this place, and he's correct. So like, you know, yeah, I guess he's not wrong, but he's so <laughs> fucking crazy. Um, so. Wait, like, wait, this is this this is this movie's idea of a joke, right? So they, they see the munchie and he goes, uh, oh my god, it's an alien and the kid goes, Maybe an illegal alien. But um Yeah, you notice how none of you laughed? Yeah. That's right. That's, they, yeah. And they find this alien with like no effort. <laughs> like there's like they just walk in there and they're like, Hey, here he is. And I love the fact that they keep talking about it like it was some Hard thing to find. And then they named him Arnold after the pig from Green Acres. Womp, womp. The father goes to this seminar and he leaves his son and the son's girlfriend to watch Arnold. And they waste almost no time getting to fucking. Um, yeah, which is awesome because, like, it, it it's so bad. And you sent me a message at one point when you were watching me? this movie. Yeah, when you were watching this movie that said, I think... I just heard the sounds of an alien jerking off to a porno magazine while watching a movie. <laughs> yes. yeah, I was like, is that monkey jerking off? What the fuck am I watching? I was just like, it ruined my day. This, <laughs> that part of this terrible movie really just put a black spot on my day. See, I'm going to be honest. The, the munchy jerking off was around the point where I'm like, yeah, this isn't so bad. Um, uh, and, also, and also the stoner son, Dude Macintosh is so fucking good. He's the best part in this movie. Uh, so their next-door neighbor is an eccentric and evil candy salesman. Wait, one sec, one sec, one sec. I don't want to skip past the, the sex scene part where they're in the bed, and she goes, ah, don't be so rough. And he goes, I'm not even touching you yet. And they realize that Arnold is in the bed with them. <laughs> and then they're both just like, get out of here, you. Oh, get out of here. It's like, that's a fucking alien. <laughs> It was it's just touching alien. your vagina. Yeah, they're treating like, it like a dog, fuck? like if the dog jumped up on the bed. <laughs> oh. that's, 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 so, that's the worst part about this movie is that it's like, the, yeah, it's an oh, you all the time. Everything is just like a you know, little scamp. No, it's a horny alien. What, what movie exec was like, yes, make this alien have a boner for an hour and a half? <laughs> Actually, I want to see something. Matt wants to see an alien boner. I know. I do. Yeah, who doesn't? Fuck, uh, I do. Wait. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. I, I um I was on the page for Munchie and not Munchies, and saw that Munchie came out in in 1992, and was like, wait, was Munchies an answer to to Gremlins two, the new batch? But uh, it is not. It is not. So yeah. So they get to fucking fucking Arnold hops up in their I, bed. I, I love that Matt is like. That that's your euphemism. Yeah, get they to get to fucking. Yep. Oh, so you're so so we meet the uh, the eccentric and evil next door neighbor who is a candy salesman who dresses and acts like a used car salesman. Um, and that his, character sucks too. His and it's ca- also played by the same guy that plays the dad, right? Because they're supposed to be twin brothers. Is that did I get that right? Maybe I know Harvey Corman is in this movie, which is so sad. Yeah, it's the same guy. Uh, yeah, Harvey Corman just. Yeah, I mean, this is Hedley Lamar from Blazing Saddles now just playing two characters in fucking munchies. Like, his, <laughs> his career has definitely, like, took a fucking nosedive. Although he also played three aliens in the Star Wars Christmas special, so, like, not exactly like he had the world's <laughs> greatest career trajectory in history. No, <laughs> but, Jesus. But the dude's fucking hysterical when he wants to be, but he clearly does not want to be in this movie at all, and it shines in every scene. But again, I have to stress that the stoner stepson is the highlight of this movie. He just has these lines, and then when they when I found out that his name was Dude Macintosh, I lost my shit. <laughs> that, is, like, that might be the best name that has ever been given to a character in any movie we've watched in our movie. Night. I, I think that you know, I, I I would like to append that. That's the best movie name given ever. Like, <laughs> I didn't. That that actually takes this movie from a point five star to a one star. And I just want to throw this out there because I feel like a lot of other podcasts bring this up. The voice of Munchies, or 
the voice of the munchies is Fred Welker because he'll do Fred the voice Walker. of yeah he'll do the voice of fucking anything. Who's uh, Fred Welker? Uh, if you look at his IMDb credits, it is like three hundred different things. Just just tell me who he, what he's famous for. Uh, just one. Fred Scooby Doo. Okay. Um, That's he, on Scooby Doo. Yeah, he voiced uh, Michael Jordan's dog in one scene of Space Jam. Like he will literally take any page. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so you mentioned that all the munchies are are um, voiced by this guy. Yeah. All the munchies talk in jive. Yep. Yes, they in do. 1988, or whenever this movie came out. Seriously? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this is so bad. This movie just sucks. So so let's talk about the, the fact that so, – so Stoner's stepson, uh, Dude Macintosh, accidentally, <laughs> accidentally <laughs> kills Arnold. And no, he doesn't accidentally kill Arnold. He decides he to – to, just kill him. Yeah. They have this huge drawn out battle and then he kills him. Uh, so well, he's trying, he's trying to listen to grateful dead and yeah. Arnold keeps interrupting him. So he throws him against a wall, which then Arnold chucks a bunch of pool balls at him and it just turns into a retarded, just shotgun. And then he chops him up a bunch, but they live in a fucking madhouse, man. Like the design yeah. on that house is like, it's Pee Wee's uh, house it, from fucking Pee Wee's yes, Big Adventure. Yes, it is. Okay, there we go. It is, man. It's so like, weird. Like, dude doesn't make cereal. He slides down a pole, and then a series <laughs> of contraptions make him some Mr. T cereal and a face made of eggs and bacon. Like, that's... Leave me alone! I just want to listen to my grateful dad. <laughs> so, like... Uh, did you say munchies? That's the word of the day. Uh, it's it's Arnold, not you got to be sale, on your best Francis. behavior. The king of cartoons is going to be here soon. <laughs> so the body of Arnold splits into these four new creatures that are all more evil and violent than Arnold, and also never stop fucking talking like ever. Their lips never move, strangely enough, but they chat nonstop. Uh, they kill Arnold, or they kill Dude. Via speakers. Um, the best part about that is that they don't even show the body when the mom comes in because they didn't have enough effects budget to show a dead body. <laughs> well, or they had no idea to explain how just turning up the volume really loud killed somebody. Also, why didn't he just take the stupid things off of his ears? Because he needed to feel the grooves, man. He needed to get into that jam sesh that was happening. He wanted to keep on trucking. He had to keep on trucking. <laughs> But it, it's I, I guess this really, really, really is a Gremlins hardcore ripoff because it's like when Gizmo gets wet and then all the additional Gremlins that come from him are mean, right? Well, yeah. no, 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 no. The Gremlins that come from him. There are no – he's a Mogwai. No, even, even the Mogwai that come out of him though. Oh, you're right. The Mogwai are assholes and then they become Gremlins. You're right. You know, I want to know what kind of Gremlin Gizmo would have become. I've always wondered that. I always thought that there was going to be a point – in Gremlins 2, I remember seeing that in theaters, uh, and you know, after I got over knowing that Hulk Hogan wasn't in the theater, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh man, Gizmo's going to eat some food after midnight, and he's going to become a gremlin, but he'll be like a super good gremlin. He's going to take down these other gremlins. <laughs> you know, that's I, I never thought of that when I was a kid. I never thought of that until just now, and I don't think it's necessarily a good idea, and that's probably why it took 20 years to come to mind. But um, the so like they would have if they could have only had him turn into a gremlin if they could have turned him back to a mugwai because like he is the cute one yeah and and that's what kids love it's like oh cute gizmo like cute voice instead of like the evil gremlin voice so i don't know if they could they, they should make a gremlins 3 now obviously john ham would be in it yep. um and then then they would turn gizmo into a gremlin to fight the the evil super gremlin whatever decision that they made with that um, and then, you know, they'd have to give him some sort of serum that he could shed the, the gremlin skin and have his cute skin under the cute I, fur. Underneath. I don't know. I keep imagining the ending of Gremlins 2 when Zach G- uh, Galligan is walking off with Phoebe Cates and they're talking to Gizmo when he's in that basket. But just that scene all over again, but with the gremlin Gizmo voice coming out of the basket instead. <laughs> <laughs> 
now we're talking. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but if I had to guess what type of gremlin he would be, I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there because while I'm doing it, but vegetable gremlin. Yep. That's what I'm saying, vegetable gremlin. <laughs> he just comes out as vegetable gremlin, no explanation why. This is really doing it for me. Don't, don't <laughs> tempt me. I might have to write this screenplay. <laughs> All right, so so let's jump ahead real quick. So dude, dude McIntosh is dead. It's devastating to me <laughs> as a person. And then there's like a fucking 30 minute car chase okay that lady <laughs> that old lady surprised uh, oh there are th- two foot tall aliens wearing burlap sacks talking jive shooting a shotgun at her out of a piece of shit like festiva or whatever that thing was that old lady Pinto. is so ridiculous the car explodes and she's like shaking her fist and stuff I'm like what the fuck is this Yes. Oh, um, my God. Didn't she have some sort of, like, explosive or something that she was throwing at their car? Like, I remember, like, firecrackers going off on the windows and stuff. Maybe. I. I they were throwing firecrackers because they somehow had – there they were, were inexplicable, like, um, firecrackers that people had in, in numerous parts of the movie. All right, so so I started to drift off in this movie. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is I'm getting to the end of my notes too because yeah. I'm like, there's nothing else to say about yeah. this. Movie. That car chase scene is like literally a quarter of the movie. Um, so so eventually everyone realizes like, oh, these creatures will multiply if we cut them, but electricity will kill them. Like that's pretty but, much but that is sweet when they get electrified and they turn into those um, those little statues. Those those that was kind of fun looking. Yeah. So eventually the stand-up kid manages to kill all the creatures and save the day, and he also discovers that the candy is being made out of toxic waste. So that, like, gets rid of the crazy eccentric neighbor slash uh, uncle Uncle. situation. And then um, there's this cameo by by my boy, my boy Paul uh, Bartle, who's been in a few movies that we've discussed on this show. From he's famous for being in all, like almost every single movie produced by Roger Corman, so he was he was in uh, Death Race 2000 and Piranha and Rock and Roll High School and Eating Raul and Chopping Mall and and tons of other movies. He was also the theater manager in Gremlins 2, tying it back around. Someone must have saw his performance in Munchies and was like, "We got to get that guy. He's he's the dude." Appar- I don't remember this, but apparently he's in Joe's apartment as I'm looking at his uh, IMDb credits, which is fine by me because I like Joe's apartment. But yeah, dude's in a bunch of movies never having more than like a two-second cameo at any given time. Um, so weird. Hey, uh, so so two qu- – uh, no, a couple comments that you glossed over. There, there was a crazy E.T. reference where like the kid I think is like – I uh, yes, the ice cream kid, he like reaches out his finger and the 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 munchie like reaches out its hand and then they almost touch and then it goes ah! <laughs> um and also the uh the lady the the wife of the skeevy candy uh warlord uh drug lord whatever uh she's reading a tabloid that says gremlins right on the back cover and it's just too on the nose for me um but then uh, moving forward, because that was way back, but uh, somebody was trying to put the moves on their wife. Oh, oh, oh! I'm sorry. It was it was the creepy uncle was trying to put the moves on his wife after their stepson is murdered by 18 inch aliens. Like that's another really weird, unnecessary scene when he's like, "Oh, baby," and he's like trying to kiss her neck, and she's like, "Oh, he was such a good boy," or something like that. I don't know. But then we move on to the part where. I realized that I recognized the the female lead. She was the lead in Critters. Really? That was that was definitely intentional. Yeah. So like we've got this crazy incestuous movie Munchies here. It's got it's basically a Gremlins ripoff with ET references and um, a solid straight link to the uh, the to Critters to the Critters franchise because that girl's in Critters one. I don't know if she was in Critters two. I think she might have been. And also in Critters 2, there's that awesome scene where the Critters destroy that um, that fast food place, which is also referenced in this movie. Because they go into that fast food place and they're making a goddamn mess. Yeah, yeah no. the ice cream place. I thought yeah. that there was a fast food place because the 
uncle's wife is like, I'm starving. I'm going to die. Oh, right, right, right. That one. Yeah, that one was it's weird. It's just like, okay, so, and then and then they're at, the, so I'm just pointing out all these notes that I think are actually worth mentioning. Um, nothing else that I said was worth saying, but I did anyway. But, so we're back to um, another munchy orgasm scene here at the putt-putt um, at the, that, that putt-putt scene where those two girls are wearing the shortest fucking skirts. Um, I, I, no girl wears a skirt so short that they show their panties even before they bend over, especially not when they're playing putt-putt, right? True. You know, we're actually forgetting the, uh, the scene where the girls are swimming in the, po- in, the, in the lake as well. I'm not forgetting it. There's nothing to say about that. <laughs> Such a stupid scene. Yep, pretty much. The, like the, how are the munchies? How are they scary? Like the, the, well, they why killed they, a dude. Literally, what, they killed a dude. They killed one person in this. Well, they movie. killed a guy named Dude. That's what I'm saying. Um. <laughs> I think that I, I really think that they only killed one person. They just menaced a bunch of others. <laughs> It's really funny to think about. You were, what movie were you bitching about? Like nobody dying in? Um, it was Ticks, and ticks. way more people die yeah. in Ticks. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, way more people die in Ticks. I mean, Munchies is not really an appropriate name either, because it would imply that they like eat these people or anything. Really, they're they're just. It should be called like mild inconveniences. No, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> they're called munchies because he was like, "Oh, it's a munchie because he's so hungry." <laughs> yeah, but who like, gives a shit what that dude has to say because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he also is a terrible comedian. Like that, the, the, they should have, they could have made this would be so much better if it was like a running joke that his jokes sucked. This is very true. I just, I wish that he had done like Rodney Dangerfield level jokes throughout the whole movie about that the munchies not giving him any respect. No. <laughs> I don't wish that on anybody. Uh, so ridiculous. This movie is absurd. I can't believe we're still talking about it. We, this is the most we've discussed a movie <laughs> in months. Like, well, I've only got one more thing to say about it, and it's like he keeps talking about there being toxic waste in the in the the caves or the, the secret passages or whatever. But then they get down there, and he's like talking about, like, oh, you've got this for this candy and this for this candy. He goes... And Agent Orange for your orange popsicles. And I'm like, Agent Orange isn't toxic waste. That's chemical rep- like weaponry. He would have had to go out of his fucking way to buy Agent Orange <laughs> to put it in the popsicles. This really bothered you. You're like, this is so stupid. No, I really in the yeah. Case, I, that, that's that's my. That's when I lost my suspension of disbelief. Was at that point. <laughs> Up until that happened. point, little fucking chode monsters running around. I was still totally on board for that. Pervy chode monsters. Really, that's that's the best part of this whole movie is that it, they're horny. Like that, somebody really greenlit this. I, I, I honestly can't tell you who the audience for this film would have been when it came out. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. Yeah, I'm at a loss. Anyway, we don't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> the damage has been done. Yeah. So, uh, what did you guys watch this week? All right, well, to round out a really disappointing week of movie watching, um, I watched Paper House from, I, I think, 88 as well. Um, I, th- there was a list on our mo- Reddit movies, Reddit R movies um, subreddit that said, here are a bunch of like psychological and horror movies that uh, you may have not seen. And I wrote down a bunch of them and figured I'd watch Paper House which is this movie from the 80s that's British. And the, this little girl is like a shit, little just little bastard child. Um, and she gets sick and has fever dreams. And be- when, before she has a fever dream, every time she like draws on this really crappy drawing of a house with a little boy in it. And every time she adds to the drawing, it adds to the stuff in the boy's house. And it's like a visually interesting movie but nothing happens. It is the slowest slow burn, not worth the time. And I was like, why is this on this guy's list? And I just just thought, I, I wonder if there was a, like some review back when it was new that would have that would have made it be on this guy's radar because I'd never heard of it. Roger Ebert gave it like five stars. Well, was, it's like, I'm aware of it because it's one of the hardest movies for me to find. On, from that book of 101 horror movies that you've never heard of but should see at least once. Well, there we go. Yeah. That's why. It's because it's not that great. It really, yeah. it's, 
it's it's super disappointing because the hype was way bigger than it was worth for that. It was kind of piece of crap. I mean, like I understand the attraction, I do, but I don't like. I did not like it. Yeah. Uh, so I watched um, a movie that I had been interested in seeing for a while. It's kind of an older movie. Uh, in fact, it is not kind of an older movie. It is an older movie uh, called Mister Sar- uh, Sardonicus. I believe it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A William Castle movie. Yeah. And it. Uh, <laughs> I love how you just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it, it was fine. It, it was what I expected it to be. I just have been really in the mood to try to see all of the William is, Castle movies. Is in that? No, uh, but it is very similar to uh, what's the one. Um, Dr. Yeah. Fipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the sense that the main character wears a mask the whole movie that looks like his old face. Um, it's it's fine. It's about a guy who has a hideously deformed face, and he hires a doctor to to fix his face. And he's also like a real dick that tortures people to try to like feel joy. Uh, and there's a it's famous for the ending in which William Castle lets the audience decide if he should live or die. Uh, and the audience, oh yeah, the audience apparently always voted for him to die, even though there has been no evidence that there was ever a uh, filmed ending where he lived. Um, <laughs> oh, that's how I know about it. Yeah, yeah. that's that whole that they that they were like, yeah, yeah. The audience said, kill him. Yeah, but it's like, okay, so they never said either way. <laughs> And so that's it's rigged. Yes. It's rigged, Matt. So that's all I have to say about. It. I mean, it's worth checking out, especially if you're someone who wants to, um, who wants to see all of those William Castle movies. It's it's not that bad. It's a quick breeze through. Uh, but you know, if you don't really know about William Castle and don't care about William Castle, it's not worth your time. Adam, what cartoons did you watch, bro? Adventure Time. <laughs> and uh, and, Sleepy and Time. Bob's Burgers. I, I watched uh, all the HBO shows are back. So Game of Thrones is back and um, uh, fucking Silicon Valley is back. So I get, I'm back to week to week TV watching. The Internet has ruined me because I watched the first episode of Game of Thrones and I was like, sweet. Now I'll watch the other nine. And I was like, oh, wait, shit. That's right. Fuck, I got to wait for them to come out. Don't I? <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because – uh, I, I just, so much crazy stuff happens every episode in that show that I can't, um, I, I just can't deal with it. So I'm just waiting until this season's done and then I'll watch it. I'll just binge watch on Hulu. Silicon Valley. Have you guys ever watched Silicon Valley? No. It's a pretty good show. It's got a lot of people that I like in it. It's got like Martin Starr and Kumail Nanjiani. I, I'm not Martin, a huge you have fan of TJ Star. Miller. What's that? You have me at, uh. At, uh, at March. Star. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that guy. Um, yeah. So I've just been watching those. I'm, I'm waiting for tomorrow. Get all caught up on them again. Um, of course, that and RuPaul's Drag Race. That's all. Really? Just binging the, the, the Ru. Wait, are yeah. you <laughs> that you, you're watching it? Like, I, I, I can't tell sometimes with you because I thought that we had this conversation like a couple weeks ago and you were like, yeah, I just I can't get into it. Well, he got into it. Derek, Derek Barry left, left last week. I, I don't know. I am not watching the new season, so you can't ruin it for me either way. Well, I'm just proving to you that I am, in fact, watching the show. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Adam. He's like, I just wanted to record the show. I'm not a liar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck you. You know what else I watch? I watch the extra, like, a supplementary show, RuPaul Untucked, that they put out every Tuesday. Okay, I watch okay. that, too. You actually... <laughs> Oh, that's that was the conversation we had. I, you were saying like, I I just don't understand these 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 drag st- these drag queens. Like, how do they do it? And I, I, and you're like, do you realize that they push their balls up into their into their abdomen? Yeah, like, into their yeah, cavities. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that you were you were asking that because you were so appalled by the concept. And not that you were watching it and you were just interested. That's so. My apologies. Well, I'm I'm, I, I'm still feeling active like ball empathy pain every time that I see them on on the screen. But I, I haven't <laughs> become invested in the drama. I can't fucking look away from it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, that was 1987's Munchies. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email. Let us know what movies you think we should watch. Chris, thanks for the recommendation. I didn't enjoy watching this movie, but we actually did get a pretty good episode out of it, I think, uh, which 
you know, can't be said about all movies. Demon win. Demon win. <laughs> um, so. I can't wait to hear that. I think it's going to be just a train wreck, and I'm so excited. Uh, so make sure you're shooting us an email. Send us those rating reviews and all that other good jazz. We'll be back next week with a little musical number. So I hope you guys are ready to have, uh, I, I feel like, a repeat of the Space Invaders episode where <laughs> I am about to get, I'm, I'm about to get train wrecked. And it's going to be fantastic. Tune in. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 